Hey guys, Aaron here from the future. I'm in my office and I just wanted to point out a couple of things. I'm making two versions of this video. I have just started editing day one and it is three hours and 15 minutes long so far. So what I'm gonna do is make one version that is shorter, less detailed, and that's for uh, you guys who just wanna kinda see what this is about and enjoy watching that kind of content, but don't probably plan on doing it right now. And then I'm gonna leave the full detailed version because uh, that's what I wish I had when I was doing this. And I'm gonna put them on my members only section. So anybody that is a member, if you click that join button, you will have access to it. And I'm gonna try to make it so that it is ad free. And you're gonna want that because if you're doing the job, there's gonna be a lot of ads. Now, sometimes YouTube throws ads in that I can't control, but I will try to make it ad free for you guys. So you are watching the free version right now. So either version, I'm splitting it up into two days because it is pretty long. Day one, we cover all of bank, well, almost all of bank one. Day two, we finish up putting the cover on for bank one and we get into bank two, complete the whole job, run the cam deviation test and check a before and after. And we have one almost catastrophic failure. So yes, stay tuned for that. I know some of you are rooting for a big explosion or me to fail or something like that. But you'll get a little bit of that, but uh, spoiler alert, it worked and it is better than before. So with that said, let's get right into the video. Hey guys, Aaron here, welcome back to the channel. As you can see behind me, I finally got my screen up for my diamond donors now. Sorry about the quality of this. This was a five minute job without internet access. So that's the best I could come up with. In the future, our diamond donors will be recognized in our videos like this. Uh, this is the PC that's powering it from Rio Toro, one of my sponsors. So shout out to those guys. Uh, today, we've got a cool video. We're gonna be doing some things for my buddy, Steven, who is a local guy in town who's found me through my channel. And we're gonna be working on his Porsche Boxster S. So here is his beautiful 2002 Boxster S, and this is Steven. So Steven, tell me what we're gonna be doing today to this thing. Uh, so today we're going to be replacing the VarioCam timing chain guide pads. All right, and if you guys don't know what those are, that's what those things are. And this is a very common problem in all kinds of Boxsters. Uh, Typically, the stock ones, uh, when you take them out, they look like a dark orange or red. And uh, you've probably seen videos or maybe in your own oil, little uh, plastic bits that uh, come out in your filter. That's what people tell you to pull your filter apart and look for all the time. So um, there's no videos out there for doing this with the engine still in the car. And that's where we're gonna att attempt today. So we got a lot of other parts here. Tell us what these things are, Steven. So we've got extra cam caps, uh, which you have to remove to figure out which side of the engine is in top dead center. Right. And then we've got extra oil pump seals because you have to remove the oil pump to do this. And then we have extra cam cover sealant because that is a liquid gasket. There's no press in part for that. Okay. And uh, then we have one crush washer here for a timing chain tensioner because we're going to have to take those out too. So. Yes. It's gonna be a uh, complicated process. Uh, There's gonna be a lot of work, like most of my videos, never done this before. So we're gonna see how it goes. And uh, Steven is trusting my shop to him, but you know, he's doing all the work. Uh, the channel name is Help Me DIY, not Me Do It For You. So, you know, I'm gonna help. So if you noticed, I am already sweating because we already put in some work just to get his car in position to get up on my lift. Uh, his is, I thought my cars were low, but his is super lowered. So we had to uh, get it up on here and then use a jack in the back as well, just to lift it up to get enough clearance to get this on the back. So we're gonna lift this car. So if you're doing this at home, there's a chance you're using some quick jacks or doing it on your back. Uh, I think it's still doable, but I'm glad I have a lift. All right, so before we lift this thing, we're gonna get access to the engine cover. I have a video on that, so we're not gonna film all of that. The, this is a Zine top. This is not, not a Cayman, even though it looks pretty cool like a Cayman. Uh, these are my favorite tops. If I ever got a hard top, I'd get one of these. But check out the link here if you need to know how to get access to the uh, top of your engine. And I also have a video, there's a link, and it will be in the description as well for how to access the engine from behind the seats. You're gonna need access there as well. 
Uh, so super thankful for the mini split, super thankful for the lift. And uh, while Steven's getting all this stuff ready, I just want to tell you that he makes chocolate and he lives in High Point, North Carolina, and it looks awesome. He brought me some, so I'm super excited about that. All right, the company is called Eigen Chocolate. There is a website right now. Online ordering is not available currently, but should be in the future. Send him an email if you want some. And for bonus points, comment in the comments if you know what Eigen is for. All right, so you wanna go ahead and make sure you disconnect the negative terminal on your battery. And it's just gonna be a 10 millimeter. Yeah, make sure. Make sure you don't close this all the way because you won't be able to open it. So this is the toolkit that I've used on my car before. Uh, I think I got this on Amazon. So I actually have a video on how to do this to lock it at top dead center. So I'm not gonna record that. You can go check out that video. So uh, first step is to remove all of the panels down here towards the engine. And these are mostly, are they eight millimeter? I forget, <laughs> 10, they're, they're still 10. Right. All 15 mils. Yeah, so we're just gonna go ahead and lower it so we can get to uh, the rear bolts on that because the uh, lift point is blocking it. That one just fell off as soon as we got, got the jack out of the way. So yeah, these things are the perfect cam cap removal tools or even the ones, I think I, mine had a hook on it, but you just, yeah, puncture it. All right, so from the back of the car here, you can see that this is one of the tensioners right here. It's nice and shiny, just replaced. <laughs> And right up here is that cover that we just removed. And the reason you have to remove those is to see uh, which bank uh, you have at top dead center. So there's a little notch in it. You can see that little notch right there. And it's uh, kind of aiming up right now. So this is the one that uh, is used to lock them in place that we're gonna put the tool into it uh, that goes into that groove to lock it so it cannot turn. All right, so we're gonna have to remove the headers in order to get access to this. So uh, I just disconnected this oxygen sensor. Yeah, just undoing the coil packs too, since they're gonna come out. Here's one of the Vario cam solenoids. This is bank one on this side. Yeah, this is the uh, passenger side in the US for this car, uh, bank one is over here on the right, and then on the left of the car, on the driver's side in the US, bank two. bank two. And there's that uh, little solenoid right there. All right, so before we get too far into it and to let things cool off, since he just drove over here today, we're gonna go ahead and drain the oil, because uh, you're gonna wanna do that before you take those covers off. And I don't know why I'm pointing at that thing, because uh, you know, this is the oil pan. So we're gonna just uh, drain oil uh, so I'm going to start working on pulling the exhaust. Okay. Time to remove the headers. You got it. I got it. All right, pass it off. Thank you. Yes. All right. All right, gonna take off the coil packs. Again, like I said, I have a video on this if you need a more detailed walkthrough of it, but these are just E10s, and there's one on the top and one on the bottom of each of these coil packs, and then they just pull straight out. Yeah, the oxygen sensor plug. Just a 10 millimeter? Yep, just a 10. Get 
up up there out of the way. And I'll pop that cap off there and we can see if we are in uh, bank one or bank two, top dead center. Right, okay, so yeah, two caps. We're gonna pop them off now. All right, now you can see in there the direction of this thing. It must be down, must be to, oh, to the left. It looks like it's pointing to the left. left. So I yeah. think it's not the right location. So yeah, after you get it locked into top dead center, it's either correct for bank one or for bank two. So that's what we're checking right now to see uh, which bank it's set for. And if you want to work on bank one and it's set for bank two, then you have to go a whole 360 degrees uh, again with that uh, crank to get it. Uh, into the same top dead center spot again, but then it'll be right for this bank. Yeah, bank one, we want it to face out. Bank two, we want it to face in. In being towards the engine. So this one we want to be facing out and it is facing in. All right, so we're gonna pull that pin and uh, just rotate it clockwise. Yes, that's important. I didn't yes. notice that before. Make sure you go clockwise always. All right, from back here, you can see the other cap, actually, that we're gonna need to pull off. So we're gonna go ahead and pull it off while it's easy to reach. So we don't just need to see uh, which direction they are, but we're actually gonna use a tool in there to lock it in place eventually, so. so you can see. You can just kinda see the, the lower one is vertical. It's kind of hard to tell from this angle. All right, now you can see that notch there after we rotated it 360 degrees. It's facing out away from the engine. So that's where we want it for bank one. All right, here is the one at the back. Let me try to get my phone up here. All right, so here you can see that the, there's two notches on it and they are uh, vertical. All right, so we have two different cam lock tools. We have these, which this just goes into the, the holes in the back of the uh, cams to hold them in place so you can take the cam cover off. And this is the actual timing tool, which you can see it has a groove to line up in that vertical groove. Um, I don't know if this is gonna fit on the engine with it in the car. Okay. So. <laughs> we will find out. We'll find out. Bulky. E brake cable. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I don't think so. And this is the tool. Well, this is the Chinese version of the Porsche tool yeah. <laughs> that Pelican Parts uh, recommended using over okay. the over the timing tool. Okay. Nope. So I do not have the right side. <laughs> in the. Uh... Yeah. So I got. Uh, so there's two of these things. One is for bank one and one's for bank two? Uh, yeah, for, for this tool. Okay. It is side specific. So we need to write on this. So yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's in the back of the cam because there's like a... So these things are yeah. pressing into the a space in the back of the cam. So it just presses against the end of the cam to yeah. stop them from yeah. moving. Yeah, so from my other video where I did, uh, what was I doing in my other video? I don't uh, remember. Tensioners. Oh yeah, the tensioners. I found this bolt somewhere and... Uh, <laughs> happens to be the right size. <laughs> it happens to fit in these holes. And the kits don't come with these. So. Conveniently. Yeah. It doesn't seem like these are the right size to me. These actual bolts are not long enough to go in. So this is Pelican's Pelican parts right up. Uh, where is it? Uh, this, this right there. Uh, yeah. So it would give you a lot more clearance. Yeah. And yeah, what do they have going in the sides? Do they show? So it's, it has a vertical, and there might be another picture of it in here. There you go. So you can see it, it has the same two shapes uh -huh. as that other timing tool, but it's flat. Yeah. So it's still got the same bolt that attaches it in the middle and yep. then these just don't move there. Yeah, they just, it's the right size. <laughs> <laughs> All 
All right, tool attempt number three is the original one that I used to lock the cams. So this should hold them. So this is a modified three chain yeah. <laughs> cam holder tool. This is the one that I burnt myself on grinding it down. I remember <laughs> it's bringing back memories. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the purpose of these in cap tools is because all of the cams are only held on with, with the bolts that are on the outside of the cam cover. Right, so when we take the cam cover off, this will, in theory, prevent them from falling out. Yes. There's my bolt in the middle, and uh, one end of each of these is in there. That should be in the groove there. In the groove. Oh, yeah. And then the top one. In the groove. Get this right there. It should just be in the back of the that's what that looks like. Uh, sending unit right there. So uh, I think there will be enough slack to just un unplug the plugs on the top of it and keep it in. Because when you take the bolts actually off of the, um, what's the official word, the oil scavenge cam cap gear or something like that. <laughs> you don't want to take those bolts off when it's under tension, so that's why you take the tensioner, have to remove the tensioners. Okay. And then that's why you put them back in when you reinstall it so that... Yeah. So because you can install these the wrong way, we're just going to make a mark here. That way we know it's it goes on that bottom corner. Yes. And we put it back on. No, it's just four bolts. Just uh probably hard to film, but yeah, it is breaking them loose. pretty easy to put the wrench in here. <laughs> so we might want our oil catch can into this uh, eventually. That's a good idea, yeah. <laughs> We're probably going to get some oil coming out of here. This is a little oh, silly yeah. to use for these lower tensioners, but when you're replacing the upper one on bank two, uh -huh. uh, the original tensioner is a hex head like this. The replacement actually has a 14 mil Allen head key in it because there's not very much room. Uh -huh. This, however, will fit in the in the uh, original upper one as well. That's good to know. It's this ring oh. gasket right here, so it's, like it's pressed in the yeah. edge. We get to pick that Replace out. those. So that's the uh, end of one of the cams right there. So these four bolts are holding the like sprockets onto the end of the cam. Is that right? Yep. So when uh, your engine turns that chain, it's turning your cam. Uh, the bottom cam, I guess. Yep. The exhaust cam. Yeah. And uh, the slots are in the cover so that you can time it. So yeah, you can see that that slot lines right up that groove. Yeah, just use a pick to get that thing out. There's a bunch of them. Oh, there's a nice list. All right, I'll uh, make a little, you guys can pause the video here if you need to check those out. Thank you, Pelican Parts. Yeah, so these are all 10 millimeter and uh, when you torque them back on, it's like 10 or 12 or something newton meters. I'll show you when we're doing it, but they're really loose, so it should be easy to get off. This is the actual solenoid cap. I'm just loosening those. Yeah, just use a variety of uh, sockets and extensions. And Whatever is easiest to reach all of these. Uh, all right, they're all loose, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Take a little break and come back and just uh, remove all these bolts. All right, so next Stephen's just gonna remove all of the bolts off of here. And just for a time check, it is almost one o'clock right now. He got here at nine. We probably didn't start till 9.30. So about three and a half hours in, this is where we're at. So I think it's pretty good progress so far. All right, we're counting just to make sure we have them all off. Is it three? Yes, we have 23. All right, perfect. <laughs> Here's Bring one out. of the prying spots right here. Big screwdriver. Okay, well, I can see if it moves by hand now. 
And maybe just need one of this dripping already, so that's a good sign. Yeah, and this it's... cap I undid already, so I'm just sliding it off so that this one way doesn't stop. Okay. It's very simple. Nope. <laughs> There's got to be a prying point on this side of them. Does that thing on the top need to be unplugged first? Oh. Uh, well. It's just two electrical slip joints. Gotcha. Definitely get it from the top very easily. Yeah, it's just... Might be enough slack. Ugh. There might, I think there's enough slack that if I pull it down, okay. they'll reach either it. come off on their own or I'll be able yeah. to reach it. Gotcha. It's coming. There oh, yes. Sorry. That's right. It's <laughs> <laughs> holding a lot more oil in there. Careful, oil's way. coming. Our tool is still in place. Tool is still in place. Solid. It doesn't feel like the cam's moving all when right. I do this. That's so good. Let me check the top one. I think it's all right. All right. Okay. And I'm just sticking my fingers in where the cam caps were to get some leverage. Uh huh. And take a break. Let it drip a little and clean up the floor so you yeah. don't die. Yeah. Yeah. Just making the gap wide enough. For this. Safety third. <laughs> well, I didn't expect that much oil to just come out. <laughs> if you guys uh, didn't see the videos on my floor, this stuff is awesome. Bam, perfectly clean. Any kind of uh, chemical that's ever gotten on here it doesn't bother this paint, it just comes right up. Okay. Oh, I think. Cams are staying put, but I'm hitting stuff that's in the way. Okay. <laughs> the oil pressure sending unit is in the way up there. There isn't one on the other side, so we have that to look forward to. <laughs> so the factory oil pressure sending unit would normally be here. I have the 911 gauge cluster, so this one has two plugs on it instead of one. One for the gauge and one for the Oil light for trick engine light, meaning no oil pressure. <laughs> they just pop off very right. easy. And it should be enough room to come out. Hex, you know, socket, standard socket uh -huh. on the bottom part of it. That's 19 mil. Um, so I'm trying to figure out if maybe I should try to do it from under the car. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but I, I've done it from up here before. I just uh, couldn't get the wrench to fit. Oh, there we go. It was that close to coming undone. Oh. <laughs> so the stock one is different and you think the stock one would still need to come out? I bet the stock one would clear because it's not this big around. Um, the stock one, you can actually fit a socket over top of. So. I think it's a 21 mil socket is what the stock one is, uh -huh. which this is obviously a lot bigger around than 21 mil. Okay. It only has one outlet on top instead of two. But, uh, oh yeah, now you can easily see what the tool does. Yes. <laughs> it's in the groove and uh, it's holding these in. So there are some internal so, grooves, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, over here. Yeah, holding the front of the cams on, or the back, or how long outside that is. The left, the rear, <laughs> the rear, the yeah, rear of the cams. And this connects to the IMS bearing here. Don't say that word on camera. <laughs> Here's the other timing chain guide. We're going to be replacing the ones up here on the Vario cam uh, solenoid. Actually, you should be able to see them now, right? Yep, right here is one, and the other one's on the inside. And oh yeah. There's... This bank, the inside one, is the one that gets all gummed up. Right. Usually. That's the one that's the oil fed one? Yeah, and then on the other bank, it's all of the same parts, just flip the other direction. So, right. Right. so All right, so next step is to uh, remove those four bolts. Yeah, we'll, we'll take this guy off and then remove the rest of the housing. So I'm just keeping my hand on the chain. I don't think it's gonna like 
pop off or anything. They say you use a rubber mallet to get this off. But just to be sure. I'm gonna edit in some suspenseful music right here. Yes. <laughs> wobbles right off. And I'm glad I'm holding the chain because it feels like it would be loose pretty easily. Yeah. Um, so you're zip tying the chain, the chain onto the sprocket? Yes. Former 240SX guy, these are a lot of zip ties. <laughs> All right, oh, chain man. should not go anywhere. Four bolts around the barrier cam, or maybe it's three bolts around the barrier cam, the two here. Is there one there? No. So two for each of the cam caps, and they have to stay in the right orientation. This one only is machined for the exhaust cam, and the intake one is only machined for the intake cam. Yeah, so we're talking about this one down here. It doesn't, does the bottom one have an A on it or something? Yes. It an A, and the top one starts with an E? And, and actually the bolts have A's on them too for oh. that cam sprocket, which I don't know if that stands for that, but it makes sense to me. So. All right, so these are, you said five millimeter? Five millimeter. Hex. Hex. And they should all be around. So you did both cam caps and also that thing in the middle. What's that thing called? Yeah, the Vario Cam uh, solenoid. Vario Cam solenoid container y object. Yeah. It's, it's the whole thing that makes. Yeah. yeah, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And so I don't... four for the caps and then three for the yeah. Vario cam. Yeah. So I don't think I got this top Vario cam one here. Nope. So you remove the Vario cam before the cams themselves? I, that's the choice I'm going with. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, preparing the surface for the thing. This floor is surgical grade, don't question it. I'm going to pull them out and set them down. Oh. <laughs> and this is much easier than laying on the ground, but it's surprisingly difficult to make your fingers do tedious things when you're yes. holding them above your head. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, just to get an idea of a wide range of what's going on here is, yeah, standing out of the car, reaching up here. So, oh, well, this tool is holding. <laughs> I was like, it's not moving really. So this is loose, you can see. That's willing to move. The top one's more than likely willing to move. So I need to undo this. Just take our tool off? Yeah. Now we'll take the tool off now. And I might leave, because it should wobble enough to get out of the way. Um, yeah, give me that. Yeah, so that. Wobble it. Yeah, that should be fine. Okay. And then we'll just put this down. And we're going to see if we can pop this off. It's like, I feel like maybe I missed something over here. Or these caps are just on there really well. Lifters are moving with it. Those <laughs> better not fall out. Stay there. Lifters. They're supposed to be suction, so. So maybe we put the tool on that holds those in place, and then you pry the caps off. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Let me get that tool. All right. So as part of that tool kit, this is one of the pieces, and uh, I'll show you it installed here in a second. But it did not come with the bolts. Um, but luckily, Stephen found out the bolt sizes ahead of time. You do want to be gentle because it is metal on metal. That should be fine. So that should hold them in. And what are the bolt sizes? Okay. Oh, they're on the inside. Okay. I was like, wait a second. <laughs> <laughs> they don't cover that. So they're M6 uh, by one thread pitch. Okay. Uh, 45 millimeter length. All right. And I'm not going to like crank these down. I just want it yeah, to not just fall. So it doesn't fall out like narrow, thin, like plastic. Yeah, a little uh, trim tool. Yeah, yeah a trim. 
maybe this one. If this one's, I don't know if there's even narrower ones. Okay, let's see. Yeah, it's good. I'll have there's a little lip right underneath, right there. Now, just because the cams are held in, the caps aren't. So. <laughs> really just expect the cap to come right off. Yeah, I would too. That's why we make these videos. And <laughs> yeah, nobody mentioned this part yeah. at all. Ever remove cap. Hmm. Yeah. I see why. I see the issue. That's why it's hard to get off. You see the uh, oh, little yeah, things that. that stick out? Sure, has uh, a better name than that. Can't see it all up there. All right, now you guys know the secret at least. Got to come straight out. I can feel the gap that's in it, so I'm going to see if I can get this plastic tool up there. I can. I'm wondering if since I got the top part loose, is if we undo this, if I can pull it out. Yeah, as a oh. unit. <clears throat> wow, it's like a lot more difficult to unscrew it than when it went in, <laughs> even without tension on it. Oh, I heard the cap. That's the cap. Oh, thankfully, it didn't hit the ground. <laughs> So just that little bit of uh, barely tweaking it. Yeah. I think. Yeah. E. Yeah, there's an E. English speakers it. think that's exhaust. Yes. <laughs> that exhaust. E is the uh, top one. Yeah. Is a. All we should have to do is get that one bolt and the whole thing should lift out now. Yeah. Lift, not fall. Lift. Yes. Oh. <laughs> I'm doing my best to keep that from happening because <laughs> if this falls, they're going to shatter into pieces. <laughs> It's an expensive drop. Yes. Please stay put, lifters. Please. Okay. Here we go. And out. Oh, man. Look at that. <laughs> Beautiful. Uh, time of day is, uh, I don't know, two something, probably. All right, we are at 215 and we have those out. So, not bad at all. All right, so here's our lifters. Yeah, they are precariously <laughs> closed. <laughs> yeah. Nobody's come out yet. So, that's a bonus. Supposedly, you need a suction cup to remove them. So, yeah, <laughs> hopefully, that's true. I hope so. <laughs> oh, very nice. Look at this thing. So, if we give it a little turn, that's the one that's usually a problem. And I can see that it's, it looks like it's down into the pad. You see how uh, you, it's almost up to the dots on the chain link? Where is it? I don't even see it yet. Oh, there it is. So, oh, yeah, I have a concern. So, yeah, this one is. So, do you yeah. want to know what my concern is? What's that? That's definitely bank one, right? <laughs> because the timing marks are not aligned at all on this chain. These lighter colored ones are supposed to be aligned with those dots. Now, my bank one uh, is off by over eight degrees. That's true. So I guess before we go any further, <laughs> I'll be 100% sure. <laughs> Now the nice thing is we can retime these to themselves. Uh -huh. That's the point of this chain. Yeah. And then we can turn top dead center 180 degrees yeah. and the IMS bearing part will be theoretically. Uh -huh. And right. we can hand crank it before we ever start the motor and make sure everything matches. Uh -huh. But yeah, <laughs> I thought bank one was on the right side of the car. It's supposed to be. <laughs> so it would explain why my camshaft deviation is as bad as it is if the cams aren't in time with each other accurately. Yeah, because like you said, there's a light link. And where's the other one? It's like eight links away. It's down here. Yeah, yep, there it is. And the, the markings are right there and right there. Okay, that, there's light, mark. that's supposed to be over here. Right. And this is in this orientation on the motor, so it's pointing out like it's supposed to. This is up and down like it's supposed to. Uh -huh. um, yeah, that's... And so what we're going to do now 
is compress this, Press that which is yeah. not the easiest thing in the world to yeah, do. Yeah, now there is a tool, uh, it looks like a bolt that goes through that top hole and through this bottom hole with a, a little nut. It's reverse threaded that you crank down and it compresses this thing, but uh, people say that you can just press it down with your fingers and squeeze it together and then put a zip tie through those two holes to hold it compressed. So that was the method we were gonna try. So <laughs> we'll be right back. Let me actually get it back together. Let me make sure this one fits. Cause I think I have to use the skinny one. Yeah, I'm gonna All right, so one. you guys can see that the lighter colored link is here and then there's another one that's down here. <laughs> there's, they're eight lengths apart, but there's supposed to be, one of them is supposed to be here, one of them is supposed to be over here. There's timing marks on these so that they are in time together. So what we think is probably happening is that these, the two cams are mostly in time with each other. They just put the chain on wrong uh, so that it's not lining up uh, with the marks like it should. So uh, yeah, very interesting. All right, so now we're gonna try to compress this guy to get it out, because you have to take this thing out to change the whole point of why we're here. So, is it easy to push? Not really. <laughs> <laughs> you said you gotta use quite a bit of force, so. I didn't so. think it would be. Yeah, I don't think I'm gonna be able to get that. Yeah, so I'm, gonna, I'm gonna try it. I don't have a skinny one that's longer, so I got it doubled up. So the nice thing about the tool is it just threads in. So yeah. it's a one-handed job <laughs> instead of a three or four-handed job. Okay. And they do sell knockoff versions on eBay, which probably aren't that expensive. And uh, I'm probably gonna buy one after this. <laughs> yeah, I would recommend it. When I saw you could use zip ties, I was like, oh, I'll just use zip ties. Why would you, <laughs> Why would you not Why use Why wouldn't you just use zip ties? So, you know, I think I'm gonna have to put a third one in and then we can just cinch it as well. Yeah. Did it snap? It sounded like it no, snapped. I think it... Yeah, it snapped. Oh. All right. <laughs> well, that was our practice zip ties. It was almost there. <laughs> I was just being able to wiggle the chain. <laughs> Very, very fun to redo. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's really close. I'm going to flip the whole thing over. Yeah, I guess you can't. If you push on it, it's gonna hit the uh, solenoid. Well, it came undone, so. <laughs> <laughs> Just give it a spin, apparently. That's all it took. Oh. <laughs> Excuse me. I can see how you might get these out of time while you're trying to do this. All right, yeah. there we go. She's and, really and oh yeah. Oh that gosh. needed to be replaced. <laughs> yeah. Yep. That looks like all of those little pieces that I found <laughs> in my filter. So I know this is going to be happening again in this garage. So let's. There's the two light colored chain links. There's the timing marks. They are supposed to go together like that so that you have a light chain mark with the dot in between it. And then the same would go true for the exhaust side, which would go like that. That would be, you know, once we get the solenoid back in there, that would be back in the correct orientation. So for this little high tension bomb. <laughs> yes. I'm gonna actually see if we can yeah, compress, compress it even it more. Somewhere with it. Not there on it now. <laughs> <laughs> and so Ooh. it slides it slides back and forth. Uh-huh. And that's how a VarioCam works. <laughs> so 
So yeah, it, that solenoid activates to put more or less tension on each side of the chain, I guess. Yeah. All right, we are at 2:37, and that means 2:37 p.m. So we are ready to uh, <laughs> ready to replace these things. So they just snap on, right? That's what they say. Yeah, I guess one of them kind of has a lip. Yeah, this so is that's a... probably the lip side. It looks like so you maybe you can pull off on the other side. So we can grab the brand new part. Both a lip. I think they both have a lip. All right. All right. These are the new ones. I guess they uh, Porsche redid them. Um, there's new. There are new parts, but are slightly different than the originals. You can see that the one on the bottom has the two holes in it that feeds oil, and it has an O-ring. So we're gonna uh, put the O-ring in this one. This is the top, and yeah. So they both have underneath them. They're both kind of a lip that snap on to the uh, metal part. So you just gotta pop them off, figure out how to do that. So just put pressure, pop oh, off. There it goes. There it is. There's one. And then a really bad one. Try not to mess the zip ties yeah, up. Don't break our zip ties. I think this side might be a little easier. There it goes. All right. Flip that one over so I can see the bottom of it. There's the ring. Yeah. Yeah. So there's the old O ring and that old bottom. Ta da! Let's start with that one. So this should press right in. And my fingers are oily enough. <laughs> I don't have to add oil. There we go. <laughs> And they appear to be identical on each side, so not really a top or bottom. Not really. There we go. <laughs> That's how it should snap up. Yeah, and it doesn't pull off, so <laughs> great. <laughs> and of course, the chain is going to be pushing it down, so. There we go. Oh, man. Oh. Factory fresh. Okay, a little bit. The guy that did the video with the tool still said this was an ordeal, so. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> still comes off. This will be the, one of the parts in the video when people are like, oh, <laughs> they had to cut and come back. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't do that. <laughs> don't worry, guys. We'll figure it out. I won't skip it. Maybe we uh, take a little water break, yeah. <laughs> refocus, and you come back. Yes. So if you're watching this video now, take a break. All right, we came up with a little idea here. So this moves freely. <laughs> C-clamp looks like it'll fit on here nicely. Yes, suck it. <laughs> All right. Yes. All right. Get that special tool anyway. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. I should point out that we put the old pads back on to do that, so uh, as not to damage the new ones. So if you do that, don't forget to put the new ones back on. All right. With our new assembly, let's see if this goes in better. Just. Mm -hmm. Uh, 
Latin. It's in. <laughs> <laughs> and the timing marks are still aligned. It just magically popped in. All yes. Of a sudden. So <laughs> it feels like nothing's working, and then it works. <laughs> and we're going to cut these zip ties so it can't go back. And the timing marks are still aligned. You can see light color chain with the dot right here, and then light color chain with the dot on the other side. Which is one, two, and this is like six teeny tiny zip ties because the holes are really small. So. Oh my gosh. Well, so that took about an hour. With a reasonable break. Yeah. <laughs> Take a little, little uh, stress-free, get your mind right again break. And uh, there you go. I told you we would get it done. All right, so our next step is, uh, before we put that back in, we're going to go ahead and clean this whole surface all the way around it. And the same with the cover on the inside so that we can get uh, a good, solid, clean seal to put it back so we don't have any oil leaks. It's so gonna start off with some razor blades, clean off all the uh, big stuff. The number of miles it has on it. It's nice and silver in here. Yeah. So what, 130 something? Uh, yeah, one, 124. 124. Close. And I uh, take the, uh, the cover over to the parts washer we cleaned it in the parts washer and then we uh, took some uh, brake cleaner and uh, cleaned all the solvent out of it to let that dry. So while we're in here, you can see that under this chain is another really long rail that the uh, chain rides up against and this chain tensioner uh, tensions the chain by pushing on the bottom of it. So uh, you can see the bottom of the chain guide right here and this one does also deteriorate sometimes but it is a lot harder to get out and replace so we're not going to mess with those today to remove it i think that there is like a, a bolt uh up here somewhere and then the other bolt that you have to remove is inside the transmission case so you have to uh, take the transmission out all right, so we've got some engine assembly lube here. <laughs> Don't know that Shake well. I'm just gonna put it where things are gonna be touching. Yeah. It's really not what I expected it to be like. A little more luby? Yeah, I expected it to be thicker. More of a paste. Maybe. Should I just kind of squirt this over the trash can? Yeah, yeah. I think it's, I think it's kind of like. <laughs> All right, let's squirt the top water ketchup out. Now we got, oh, that's, that's, that's more what I was expecting. Oops. So we can do a little assembly lube around the camshafts where they make contact as well. Try to put this thing back in. I'm the designated table here, holding this tool at the ready. We got the other locking tool up there in place. Of course, I knocked it. <laughs> Loosely, you, uh, yeah. Just hold them so they don't fall out on you. So one thing I don't like this isn't up and down anymore. 
Oh, the timing marks are lined up. Rotated them. Oh, shoot. I see what happened. Man. Cap is coming off of the uh, Vario cam thing. Oops. Sorry. Got to reposition the cap. Not sure when that happened, but it came partially off, so that's why they're kind of crooked. The cap? Yeah, if you come around the other side. Wait, no, never mind. Sorry, I thought this was the thing. <laughs> I thought that's where the cap went. Oh, it's okay. actually fine. Oh, okay. Okay. But I don't know why these, because this is very much not up and down on the exhaust cam. I guess they probably just are rotated. Probably just rotate the whole. Like rotate this. I don't know if that's doable. Um, Gently. This is definitely not the right direction there. And can you just rotate them by hand? Because we just randomly no. count it. Um, that is too much tension to turn in. Okay, yes, I oh. can rotate them, but they need to rotate the other way. Yeah. <laughs> turn the other one, probably. That's another general concern is these sprockets are touching the unit in the middle. The very cam yeah. part. Now maybe when they're torqued down, it pushes uh, it apart yeah, enough. Those bolts are torqued down, it probably separates them. Once you install it and tighten down the Vario cam part, do you think it'll be loose enough where you can just turn it by hand so that that part sticks straight up? We can try. <laughs> <laughs> we can try because yeah, this is uh, also you know if that's directly out it's it's off the same amount so right. they should be yeah. they should be linked up nobody talks about this no why don't you talk about this i don't think we've messed anything up it seems like you know that they have that tool to lock it because these can turn so yeah it seems like once we install it we should be able to turn them so yeah. that's pacing back up and the important part at this point is that they are in time with each other yes and they are yes so what can go wrong? Put the long bolts back in. <laughs> Threaded to start with, make sure that's not cross threaded. Then we're gonna tighten these up a bit, see if we can rotate this. I guess I need to do this side some. There. Good catch. Thank you. Well, I mean, it's tight enough now, I think, that if you can rotate it, doesn't feel like a can. Oh, maybe that's way not right. Yeah. Pointing out, is it vertical? Is it vertical enough? Uh, looks Cause I can like pull. a little too vertical. Uh, it looks yeah. like it needs to go that way. So yeah, we're just slightly. Hold on, clockwise from my direction. 
Well, they're actually pretty loose on here now. They, they move around quite a bit. How does that look? Perfect. Perfect? All right, cool. Yeah, I think that's Okay, because there's still quite a bit of a gap to overcome while tightening it down. <laughs> gotcha. Yes, you can rotate them. Yeah, is that the right way to do that, guys? <laughs> we don't know. Let us know in the comments. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> more than likely more things than I'm aware of yeah. at this point. The good thing is you're doing this first, so I'll get to hear all of the yeah, right way to do things. You can learn the right or, way to do it. what I do on my car. <laughs> well, the, none of the timing things were even kind of right on this when we took it apart. So. Yeah, that's right. It can't be much worse. Down the device. Then dowel sleeves. That's uh, what we did. Pretty much. Yeah. We I didn't. Didn't. I didn't actually fasten it down though. And I attached the Vario cam. Yeah, it didn't say that. Part fasten that part yet. Which yes. is not for a while, maybe. <laughs> Ever. I mean, it has to happen at some point. Dowel sleeves, which is the cam caps. Grease bearing surface, correct position, and. Tighten evenly. Eleven. Fit tensioning element. Oh, vario cam. Oh, so you. I did that. Tighten the vario cam after the caps. Yes. Before I this. But do the cam tool first. All right. So drop it in. Cam tool. Caps. Then vario cam. Let's try that. All right. So we're loosening the bolts in the vario cam. I'm just gonna leave them in because they have to be able to go in. That help, but yeah. it's what they say to do. <laughs> I'm sure, it doesn't have to be tight. Right. It just has to be holding them in place. Okay. All right. So now that that's tight, we saw the uh, camshafts seat in a little more. So if we're really lucky. Cap will fit. I'll see you. Evenly was bolted and italicized on oh, that side. Uh, yeah, top and bottom. Little top, little bottom. Yeah. yeah, that's how it was when we got here. So. Exciting. Okay. Okay, at least All see. right. Yeah, intake up here. Just go by feel. Yeah. You did the first one. You know what it feels like. Yeah. All right, here's the situation. We got these all hand tightened. And then realized that this uh, double chain here that goes on the pump is uh, stuck kind of between the end of that uh, camshaft and the top of this where the uh, oil pump cover goes. So I think what was supposed to happen is we were supposed to line this up on the here before when we dropped it into place from the beginning. So I think we're going to be loosening it up enough to get it back up there. At least an hour and a half tomorrow. Oh yeah. It'll be much faster tomorrow when I do the other side. <laughs> Thanks all you other guys for leaving out these important parts that we get to discover on our own, but uh, at least hopefully this will help you guys know how to stick this in right the first time. Assuming that that's right. <laughs> yeah, we'll have the tools to use to get these things off. There it goes. Oh, there it goes. Ah. Ah, please be enough room. room. There it goes. There it goes. Yes. Okay. So there. It's got to be cleared. Because it's going to tighten down, but it's got to be up like that.
Alright, I'm gonna put this uh, cam block tool thing back in. In the groove. Very nice. All right, I'm super excited because I finally get to use my snap-on torque wrench for the first time on a real project. And uh, these only are 10 Newton meters, which is seven point something foot pounds. So uh, it's nice to be able to have something that goes that low. Uh, let's see if I switch it to foot pounds. Yeah, 7.4 foot pounds, look at that. They're all hand tightened. All right, so yeah, everything's hand tightened. Now we're gonna do those caps, uh, 10 Newton meters, and we still wanna do top and bottom things. Is it, is it gonna beep for me? It'll turn green and beep when it gets to 10. So just go slow when you get to that. Okay, we're at 9.2. Okay. Yeah. It doesn't feel like it's tight at all. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, okay, those are torqued. All right, next up we're going to uh, install this uh, double chain here, just attaching it by hand. So we have to cut off the zip tie and then put the four bolts in. Oh, sweet. So yeah, you can see the, yeah, you can see the radius around there. So the ones that we got on are looks pretty much spot on. Barely off, yeah. So which again are all right, so here's our sprocket. Let me back up some so you can see. So here is uh, the sprocket from the bottom cam and shining a light behind it. You can see that there is, man, just a tiny gap of clearance. But uh, when we got this aerial cam on there originally with the tension on it, it pulled both of them against it and it was touching. So we just wanted to double check and make sure that it was not still touching. But, ooh, it's barely not touching. Yeah. <laughs> we'll make sure on bank two to look at this before we disassemble it and see if it's that tight. All right, so we are gonna stick our chain tensioner back in. Washer's on. Here is that tensioner in the rail, and the rail is not exactly centered on the chain, which is interesting to me. All right, we believe this is 58 foot pounds. There we go. All right, now we are gonna torque down the four bolts that we just hand tightened, and these are also 10 Newton meters. So all right guys that concludes day one we worked until 6 p.m and called it quits so i hope you're finding this helpful and or entertaining stay tuned for day two's video chances are it's already out and if so there'll be a link in the description or a link right up here so continue watching and uh good luck to you guys